been a very long time since we've had two people for a video. I know. Oh, well, at least on the Drag Race channel. Right. It's weird. It's interesting. And I don't think it's ever just been the two of us before. So that's interesting as well. <laughs> you know, I think uh, we might be able to get a lot of opinions in. <laughs> okay. No, that was not supposed to be shady. I just... Uh, that was. We Welcome. <laughs> To the, uh, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. Say something gay. Gay. I can only do it with one hand because I'm holding my microphone <laughs> now because the stand broke. Join the club. Yep. I literally, I, I am in my best David Keeley cosplay today. I wore a generic shirt because I did not have a generic bottle of water. Um, but today I am drinking a generic bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Ooh. How does that it's, work? Generic. It's not generic at all, but it's a bottle. So that was my connection. Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, it is not sponsored by Lucy Duca. And therefore, we will not be playing the button currently. But not I also yet. have water. <laughs> I, not yet. I also have water because obviously hydration is very important. And it is currently 111 degrees. So... There's a reason I haven't gone outside today. Fair. <laughs> well, I am David Healy, and I don't have a cute intro, but I do have a cute shirt. I'm wearing one of my absolute favorite queens, probably a top five queen for me, if I'm being honest. It is the beautiful Evie Oddly. <gasps> is that Nicole Oddly? Yes, it is her, uh, her um, jellyfish look. <gasps> Uh, work. Yes, I love that one. Yeah. Eve, you... for, for a little while, I did consider Evie my favorite all time. Drag That's a great girl. choice. I love that. That really is a great choice. Mine, like, there's so many queens that have, like, procked into my, like, top 10 or top five or whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm, I feel like I'm going to have the same favorite top three for all time. Truly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel I don't I don't think anyone is ever going to replace anyone in my top three. And that's Jujube, Mo Hart and Tia Coffee. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. None um, of them are in my top three, but one's a lot closer uh, than the others. I wonder <laughs> which one. <laughs> anyway, it's oh, I'm yes. drinking water. Some generic. Water. There we go. There we go. <laughs> We can now let loose on to episode six of Drag Race Mexico. I'm going to be really honest, David. I think this is my favorite episode of the season so far. Ooh. I really enjoyed this episode. Okay. There was a lot. It was a lot. And we'll talk about it all. And it was a lot of, oh, goodness, do I have the emotional capacity to deal with this episode of Drag Race today? Like, that's literally where we were at. <laughs> but, um, no, I think definitely... Yeah, this is my favorite episode of the season so far. Okay, I'd have to really think about it. I honestly, I know you all weren't weren't crazy about it, but I think the Rusical might be my favorite at this point. That's fair. Um, but I did like this episode. Um, I think I have some controversial opinions that we'll probably disagree on, but we'll see. I don't know how much we will actually disagree on. I'm interested because I mm. also have some outside of the norm opinions from what I've seen on oh. the little bit I've been able to see on Twitter of the discussion of this episode. Okay. It, we're filming on the day that it came out. So it's, it's a little bit more difficult to, to gauge what the public perception is, but we come back into the workroom, sit in a morning. It's gone. Mm. I'm so sad. It is sad. It, it felt like her time for me, but. Oh, her presence is missed. I think she's incredible and lovely and wonderful. And it was probably her time a couple episodes ago. But, like, I just absolutely adore her. She's going to be up there in my in my list. I really just, there's something about Sedena Morena that I am so, so loving. Loved on mm -hmm. the entire season. I think, honestly, it is just her, uh, her genuineness. Like, a lot of these people on this cast feel very genuine, but there was something about Serena from the Meet the Queens through the entire run she had on the season where she just, it was, she was so genuine and vulnerable and, like, just here for the experience. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love those queens that are just, like, yeah, I'm competitive, and, like, if I won, that'd be absolutely incredible, but, like, 
this, I want this to be an experience also for me. I mm -hmm. love, I love queens that are able to take that on while at Drag Race. I agree. And I also love a good smiley queen. And every time I thought of Serena, she was always smiling in my brain. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So I always love that. But before we get too ahead of ourselves with this episode, yes. I do want to thank everybody for the many comments that we got from the last video. Thank you. We got a lot of feedback, a lot of positive feedback, too. It seemed like people were very happy to have Eve around. Uh, we were happy we to have Eve, too. We <laughs> uh, are, too. She just started a new job, so it's going to be a little... Uh, touch and go getting her on she the is podcast. a busy woman so we mm -hmm. will do our best to make sure she is present and accounted for on as much cup content as we can possibly get her for because we adore her yes <laughs> um so i'm trying to think of some things that stood out in the comments because i'd like to talk about those first i will say uh if we didn't figure it out ourselves uh you all have made it abundantly clear peyote is a flower or it, what? it has flowers what do you mean david <laughs> I, I absolutely never would have guessed by these several many comments that were left telling us that peyote is a is if as no, a flower. I absolutely I absolutely would have never guessed in my wildest dreams <laughs> that that was the case. I appreciate those comments. Obviously, they were left in real time before they of saw course. us actually mention it. So, no yeah. shade to you all. It was oh no, full shade on my end. I'm gonna be real honest. Full shade on my end. <laughs> I get it, but full shade on my end, but we appreciate it. Okay. Um, <laughs> a lot of people sent us clips. Um, I haven't gotten around to watching I all the clips. Have. Oh, and yeah. I I told y'all, I was like, I'm very confident in the fact that Galavado is a very incredible performer. And guess what? We learned that in this episode. Spoiler. Um, no, got all the clips. I watched, I think, as many of them as I saw on our comments as of yesterday. Go watch all the clips. Gala is absolute an absolutely incredible performer and mm -hmm. we saw that in this episode so um yeah the other thing i wanted to say is a lot of people in the comments and i'm gonna assume most of these people are probably live in mexico born in mexico have some connection to the country of mexico um, a lot of people were talking about um, how they were unaware of um, Black culture and the uh, the um, necessity for braids and protective hairstyles in Black culture. And a lot of people left comments saying, hey, I had no clue about this either. So, like, I'm glad that y'all learned a little bit from this episode. Thank you for educating us on that part. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, they gave us some context um, for people who yes. do have kinky hair in yeah. Mexico and do require braids. Um, yeah. So that's just not something we hear a lot about. No, I had absolutely no clue. So again, thank you for all of that information. I was definitely very enlightened over, you know, the last week of looking at all of our comment section. Um, but yeah, it was, it was incredible. So thank y'all truly, yes. truly for everything. Yeah. I, I do want to say nobody in the comments said rest in peace, CAC trees. So I'm very offended on behalf of my beloved missing cactus, CAC trees. Um, so please send her some love and maybe she'll turn up even though I've moved since I lost her, who knows, maybe I'll, I'll still find her one day. No, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> we come into the workroom the next day and immediately we get a Lolita message. And I want to say, we never talked about the Lolita versus Valentina looks, the, the video looks, which one do you prefer, David? The video looks, you know, I they haven't really stood out to me. I didn't even notice that they have the same oh, look. Really? It makes sense because that's yeah. what RuPaul does as well. Uh, but I'd have to go back and look. I like Lolita's a little bit better. I think okay. Valentina looks good. I think hers is a pink and Lolita's in red. Um, yeah, I think they both look great, obviously. But I loved what Lolita wore into the workroom. Mm -hmm. This like asymmetrical double banded yellow, like the chest looked good. I'm just high again, thirsting over Lolita Banana. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. What I like is that we're getting kind of we're getting feminine and masculine workroom characters between Lolita and Valentina. So we're gonna Absolutely. see that male fashion 
in the female presenting fashion. So. Well, and even we're even we're getting some more feminine things from Lolita as well. Like it's been very, it's been very androgynous. It's been mm -hmm. very all over the board, and I'm loving it. Truly, like one, truly one of the best parts of this season is the workroom looks from Lolita and Valentina. Oh yeah, um, and then Valentina looked so incredible in this episode too. She did. This was a good episode for her. A very. We'll talk about her her runway look. It, a very good week for Valentina. Mm -hmm. um, but so we get a mini challenge. They have three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Wait, I missed that. No, it was three minutes because Magos and Confessional was like three minutes. I'm gonna double check, but like I'm pretty sure it was three yes. minutes. Please double check that because. If this is true, then we saw the most incredible feat ever accomplished on Drag Race, period. I think it I'm going to say that. If one person did their makeup in three minutes, that is absolutely incredible. I was already blown away. Which person? Oh, it's obvious. Like, as soon as the, the very first person that came out was Regina Voce. Oh, and I was yeah. Like, Obviously, oh, like she, she did incredible. Like she was really the only one that did good. Um, well, the others were varying levels of okay, but when she's she was out first, I'm like, Ooh, yeah, we're gonna see some really good looks, aren't we? But it was all downhill from there. It was oh, all man. downhill from there. I'm double checking the episode really, really quick okay. because I feel like they said three minutes. Yeah, I'll stall while you do that. Um, yeah, no, I'm just like. Oh, also, we have to talk about the fact that we get a message from Norvina oh, in yeah. Spanish. Yeah, that stood out to me because we've seen her on a few franchises now. But we've seen her on Down Under, obviously U.S. and then Mexico. Canada. She's been in and, Canada. Oh, she was on Canada as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, we've never heard her speak any language other than English. So yeah. I'm like, do you actually speak spanish or did you read that cue card really well um i don't think she speaks spanish she may have a decent understanding of spanish because she lives in los angeles mm -hmm. um like i've i'm born and raised in arizona and i have a decent understanding of spanish doesn't mean i can speak it well but no i got the exact same vibe when norvina was speaking in spanish that i did from uh valentina <laughs> okay I had my friend watching with me and he hadn't watched any of this season so far. And I was like, just watch for the way Valentina speaks Spanish because it's very interesting. And mm -hmm. as soon as she comes to the workroom and starts talking, he looks at me, he goes, yeah, it is really interesting, isn't it? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then Which we heard- You led the witness on this one. You should have- Oh, I absolutely did. I absolutely thing. did. Um, yes, it, I have confirmed. It was three minutes to get mm -hmm. into their Katrina's, Katrina's inspired looks. And Regina was the only person that did it well. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, we've seen that kind of look on her Instagram. Yeah. But so she, she's obviously got experience doing that kind of oh, uh, absolutely. Day of the Dead type of look. But wow, that's incredible. She it, looked great. It really was incredible. Like, I was very impressed with it. Um, but yes, Regina wins. We get our maxi challenge for the week. It's Snatch Game. Do 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 do. Snatch Game. Cut to. <laughs> Quite literally, cut to Snatch Game. I was like, oh my God, okay. Yeah, I got <laughs> like, Whiplash. <laughs> again. Oh, oh, this is a great moment to bring up another comment that we got in, the, in our comment section. I'm going to actually look up who it was because okay. I want to credit this person. But someone in our comments was talking about how the editors and producers for this season of Drag Race Mexico have absolutely no experience with, like, editing Drag Race. Oh, yes. And so um, it really informs, um, and I guess the producer or someone, again, I'm going to check the comments really, really quickly, but... Um, the the producer i believe was the producer from acapulco shore mm -hmm. so it's like no wonder it feels like a jersey shore franchise right um, we're trusting that you all are telling us the truth in these yes. comments <laughs> um so it's at omi vela 94 thank you darling you are incredible um 
But yeah, the top Mexican producer in this season is the same pr- producer of Acapulco Shore. You can see the confessionals and the edition seem very much like a Shore format. Um, which I absolutely agreed. And when I, I when I read that message, I was like, no, that's absolutely correct. Because it really does feel like Jersey Shore or Geordie Shore. Those are the two that I have experience with specifically. It feels like a Shore type confessional style with this like reality competition show, which is just like really strange. Mm-hmm. Um, and somebody else, I believe, mentioned the time con- constraints. They have to have 60 minute episodes exactly. It was that same, only okay. that, uh, it was the same. Yeah, so they have to condense all the all the episode into 60 minutes um, like they did with season 15, but not anymore because as of today, mm-hmm. we got the announcement that they um, are re-releasing full 90 minute episodes of Drag Race season 15, which yes. thank you, Brandon. If but, you know, you know. <laughs> but to be fair, uh, when we watch the Drag Race Mexico episodes, they are actually 60 minutes of episode. For yeah, us, it's, it's, we yeah. had 60 minutes, including commercials. So they really get so it. Was like, 42. It was, I think there were a couple episodes that were 39. Yeah. So like, really it should like, this should even out to what our 90 minute episodes are yes. um, having 60 minute episodes for drag race mexico but we've seen other franchises that do not have those same constraints like yeah. philippines they're like they'll give us 90 minutes without commercials so literally i'm like because we've got the philippines for next week i'm like and i'm pretty sure it's a double premiere dropped on the same night and i'm like untouched. how Plus, I'm talking. I'm like, I'm gonna have to sift through like five hours of content. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot. I'm like, am I ready for it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just we are immediately it's snatch game. It would have so. been nice to see if there was any sort of drama over characters. I'm assuming there probably wasn't, or else they. Might, I'm gonna. Might I'm gonna highly to assume that there wasn't, based on the fact that nobody did the same character mm-hmm. so but i was also counting on that to get a little bit of context for the characters so we totally. hopped right in and i didn't have any context and i only knew who two of the characters were i actually knew a lot of them oh uh, i knew look four. At you <laughs> i knew four of the characters which was really interesting i didn't know whether i would know anybody mm-hmm. um and then immediately i'm like oh wait hold on because um one of them was a guest judge on Drag Race España, I believe yeah. season three. Gloria Trevi. Who, who was Gloria? She's um, no. Who, oh, was, who played her? Artenis. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure she was a guest judge, and I, sh- I think her, she had a lip sync song. I, I believe I might. If the, if I'm pulling this from my memory, I'm very impressed with myself. I think it was the Eurovision challenge on. Espana season three. I'm going to go fact check that here in a second. But mm-hmm. uh, if I pulled that out of my memory, I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> that That's is impressive. I think, I think right the, the obvious ones that I'm sure both of us knew, uh, there was Walter Mercado, yes. um, which I only learned about Walter Mercado in 2020. Uh, something about 2020, like Walter became like a name out in mm-hmm. public. And then we also had Alexis Mateo do Walter in the Snatch Game in All yes. Stars Five, and then other than that, the only character I I knew was uh, La Llorona. Yeah, uh, La Llorona. Yeah, which I didn't even know about La Llorona until the Curse of La Llorona came out um, yeah. from the Conjuring universe. But I've heard about La Llorona plenty of times since. So, yeah. Yeah, it was a. I, I learned about yeah, like, La Llorona from a young age, actually. I got mm-hmm. a lot of um, cursory learning into um, the culture of Mexico as a kid, just growing up in Southern Arizona. So um, I clearly don't remember a whole lot of it, and uh, it, it shows. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so I knew. I, oh, I was I knew, gonna say, I always, every time I hear La Llorona, uh-huh. It makes me think of the song My Sharona. I want to go la 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 Honestly, la Yorona. La 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 Yorona. <laughs> Absolutely, hundred percent. I will never think of her the same. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome, audience. No, so I knew La Yorona and Walter Mercado, and I knew Gloria Trevi. Um, I also knew Veronica Castro. 
Um, I was familiar with Veronica Castro um, from somewhere. I honestly couldn't tell you where. I do not remember. But the character and like the way she was acting and the way, we'll talk about Christian's performance here in a second, but the way Christian performed her, I was like, no, I know this character. I don't remember where from, but I, I recognize it. So okay. um, yeah, let's just talk about Snatch Game. Ooh, I have noticed uh, with only two of us here, it's hard to find a good time to drink my water. <laughs> so. I know. Oh, no, absolutely not. That's better. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> yes. Yeah, go for it. Drink your water. Do your thing. Um, and I'm going to start uh, with our discussion. We're going to go in order. It makes the most sense. So we're going to start with Regina Voce as Walter Mercado. Um, if you're not familiar with Walter Mercado, um, he is, he was a Puerto Rican astrologer. Um, he was a very, very, very well-loved TV personality um, and was very, very popular throughout Puerto Rico as well as Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, And this seems like a no-brainer of a character. Like we've seen male characters done on these shows and they're always like the most flamboyant like men and Walter Mercado is no different, like such an over the top, like flashy person. So it made perfect sense that we would see this done. And personally, I thought Rahina did really well. Like I, yeah. I was, I was uh, very drawn to her every time she was giving a response, you could see everything in her face. She was very expressive. Did I get every joke? No, but I like that could be said for pretty much everybody. Like, I'll be honest. I don't think I laughed at all this snatch game but that didn't mean i didn't appreciate the performances i just the jokes i didn't really get many of them or any of them i don't know i that i find that actually really interesting i think this is one of my favorite snatch games i've seen in a long time mm -hmm. um i really enjoyed honestly i thought everyone did at least decently mm. there was one person for me one person yeah that did not do really well at all right. spoiler it's our but <laughs> i thought everyone else i i genuinely was like okay our is gonna be in the bottom i don't know who else and we'll talk about it i don't know if i agree i did not agree with i that. don't think i agree <laughs> but on the topic of Regina Voce, i thought Regina did a really good job mm -hmm. i i thought you know the um oh what was the joke where it was like um she was like, not the, not a match or whatever the joke she made about like, it was a clear reference and I understood the mm -hmm. reference in the moment. I don't remember what it is now, but whatever the reference was, it was like, um, oh, it's not a match. And I was like, that's funny. That's cute. And I just feel like more than just going for punchlines, I think Rahina really understood the character. Mm -hmm. Um. And the characterization was great. I don't know that the jokes were 100% there. And I think that's ultimately why she ends up safe. Yeah, that's which fair. I did agree with. I did not. Okay. <laughs> um, so for me, since I wasn't very familiar with these characters, even, even the few that I did know, I don't know a lot about them. So I was really just judging on who made me feel like I could be familiar with this character based on what they were doing. Okay, um, yeah. So I think that's a fair way to go about it, especially yeah. with like with especially with a cast of characters where you know, like you said, you know two of them. Right. The more generic, the more I held that against you. If I feel like I've seen this character a million times, I've held that I held that against you yeah. in this challenge. But dynamics and being like, okay, that's a fully developed character. And I do think this was in my top three of the most developed characters. I'll go ahead and say she was my third uh, ranked of the night um, as far as Snatch Game goes. Um, so I do have everybody ranked. I ranked them immediately after Snatch Game ended so I wouldn't be influenced by anybody else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would have had her I would have had her top in the top, um, but the third place okay. in the top. Yeah, I think, I honestly think we're going to have similar lists. I think just based on like my opinions and based on what I know of you, I think we mm -hmm. are going to have similar lists. I think she would solidly have been my fourth. Okay. Um, I didn't rank them because um, I just didn't. I didn't think to. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think on challenge performance alone, I think she would have been my fourth. I, I thought it was fair. good. I thought it was good. 
very, very solid. Mm -hmm. So next we have Magos as Martha de Baile, uh, who is an influencer. That's mm -hmm. really all influencer, uh, radio host, beauty universe person. That's really all I got from her, from mm -hmm. looking her up online, not from Magos's performance. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, yeah. So you all know I love I love me some Magos. Um, Truly she's... iconic. The only member of my team left for my draft. Oh, well. I hope she. I hope she's around for a little bit longer, at least. Um, but yeah, I she's don't definitely... think she will. But. <laughs> I'm rooting for her so hard. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of like my heart pick left. Like there's something just so endearing about her. Yeah. With that said, I really don't feel like I know this character after her performance. Maybe yeah. it's based on what they sh showed from her answers, but I just really didn't get a vibe of who this person is at all. So I, I kind of felt like she was lucky to be safe um, in the, in that low safe territory for me she was in my bottom too and i mean she was she was clearly above my last place but i just wanted more i yeah. i just wanted to know who this person is and i really didn't get an impression at all i'm gonna absolutely agree with you i think magos was my sixth um which is really unfortunate mm -hmm. because i i actually do think it was a pretty decent job i think it was fine yeah. i think i understood who the character was. And the, for me, the way I understood the character was the very first line where she's like almost like talking back to Lolita with this like very elitist sort of, um, sort of way of speaking. And I was instantly like, okay, I know this kind of character. Like I, I understand this kind of character. So I kind of got it, but I, I still don't necessarily think it was the strongest. And she even said, she was like, if I make it to Snatch Game, I thought beforehand, if I make it to Snatch Game, I'm going to go home. Yeah, that stood out to me. Like, honestly, I'm starting to feel like her biggest weakness in this competition is a lack of confidence. And I don't know if that's something that she came into the competition with or if the judging and sometimes getting unfair critiques, I'm just going to say it. Um, yeah, please do because I I agree. Yeah, I because like I feel like she should have a win by now, but um, I'm wondering if that might have beat the confidence out of her a little bit, and maybe that's what we're kind of seeing. Um, honestly, I think it happened to Arhenis. Um, and I absolutely um, think it happened to Arhenis. I don't want it to happen to Margaret because I love her. I'm uh, obsessed with Magos, like truly, genuinely, and honestly. Mm -hmm. I hope she's getting a lot of love from the fan base. Um, I know she's got a lot of followers already. So yeah. I hope people are giving her support and being like, hey, yeah, you're doing great. You may not be the best every week, but you are doing really well and you're beloved. So, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I definitely, definitely hope so. <sighs> Next up is... <laughs> Galavato. Yes, I pulled this photo specifically. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh. Um, yeah, so Galavato as La Llorona. Now, I want to give you, I just ranked everybody in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you my ranking for Gala. And I'm really interested if we have the same ranking for Gala. Okay. Gala was my third favorite. Okay, so we we, we might have pretty similar lists. I thought because so. i already told you who my third was yeah Lina. uh gala was my safe um fair 100%. i did not think she had any business being in the bottom i don't think i was like when they called tops and bottoms i was like i, I don't know what's happening with my lighting today also y'all so sorry i we're just gonna live in this whatever is happening mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> No, I, when they called tops and bottoms, I was like, oh, Gala's on the top, yes, work, and she's exactly. a cute look. Oh, no, they hate her. 
And I have a theory about that that we will discuss later. I have a theory the too. Runways. I don't know if it's. I the think same we one. have the same theory. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I thought Gala was fantastic. Yeah, I, I really thought I understood the character. I got the characterization. It was a little one note. That was kind of my only critique, and they do bring that up on the on the runway. It was a just a just a scotch one note. But the one note she was doing, I thought was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I agree. It worked out well. Like even look at how she wrote Yorona on here and she made the with double the L's. Sad face. <laughs> sad face with the tears coming out. I'm like, I'm <laughs> fucking sorry. And she like even was like referencing Boogeyman, like like they're good friends or whatever. Literally. I thought it was so dumb. Like this is this is honestly similar to like Evie's Boogeyman from a Snatch game. Um Yes. Which for me, that one. Yes, was like, absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I agree. I And I liked Evie's Boogeyman. Absolutely. <laughs> it was yeah. so dumb in the best way. <laughs> it was the, one of the stupidest Snatch Game characters in the best possible way. And in that same category, I also put um, Angeria doing Tammy Brown. Okay. Just for that Ooh. level of stupid. <laughs> oh, it was like it was like t- if Tammy Brown. It's Angeria as Tammy Brown as Cher. You know what? Lana's not here, and we can talk about all the old Drag Race. I know we, we love we, get we love Lana. Let me make <laughs> that very clear. We adore Lana. She might show up in this episode, and we're hoping she does. But it would have been funny if she popped up right. I know. <laughs> But, like, honestly, it's like if it was Angie as Tammy as Cher, and this was kind of like Gala as La Llorona as a soap opera, uh, yeah, soap, soap, no, soap opera? Is that the term? Um, soap, like a, like a, like an as uh, the world turns. Oh, yes. Or a, um, what's the, oh gosh. Uh, what is the term? I know this. Like a, what are the Mexican soaps called? A telenovela. Telenovela, kind of. I don't yeah, know. this is like Gala as La Llorona as a telenovela star. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's kind of what I got. But I, got, I lived. I honestly yeah. live for it. I appreciate that we got to see a really silly side from her because yes. she's been kind of self-contained. And as Please. our comments talked about as well, and we've talked about it as well, they have pinned Gala as the villain. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know if she should be. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so either. And I think one of the people I really like actually should be the villain of the mm-hmm. season. <laughs> um, we'll talk about She's it. She's just a silly but goose. She is just a very... No, but I really did enjoy what what gala did mm-hmm. i thought it was great i thought it was lovely and wonderful and great and fabulous and a good time it's oh. lana we literally just talked about you two minutes ago <laughs> i love being talked about Thanks. we made it we made a drag race reference and we were like lana's not here so we won't get in trouble <laughs> first of all okay we're joking obviously, but... obviously. whatever whatever how y'all doing everybody hello everybody free free it's Lana, your resident diva. She's here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea because you know she loves some tea. Per so, if you have some tea, go ahead, hit her up, and she's probably has a cup mug there, and she's probably drinking. I'm gonna guess strawberry sun kissed. I'm drinking nothing. Damn. I'm literally just walking the door, drinking Damn. nothing. Right. <laughs> I have a bottle today, so I'm the one with the bottle. But period. Nine Pepper. Cool. But um, on the topic of Galavado's uh, snatch game, Lana. I mean, I I, I enjoyed it. I, I don't know the reference, so I can't fully be like, oh, mm-hmm. I loved everything and I knew everything yeah. she was talking about. But I got it because once I, I saw the runway show and I saw what people were just, yeah. mm-hmm. I was like, the context clues were starting to kick in and I understood right. what it was. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I get it. And I think, I, I feel like she started really strong in the snatch game. I was like, okay. I get it. I think she didn't end as strong as I wanted her to because like I felt like once yeah. she lifted the veil, the character yeah. lost something for me. I don't know if it you know, I don't just for me now. I could sure. be that's I think, fair. There's not a lot of places to go with oh, this character. Yeah. So 
I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, I was saying. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead I, was, I was going to say that I had her as safe. Like, I did not think she deserved to be in the bottom. Uh, I had her in my top three. I had her in, at three. I really did enjoy what she did. <laughs> so. I mean, I did enjoy. I think I'm trying to think back because I watched it this morning, literally this Same. morning when I woke up. And so I was like, I think for me, if I'm thinking back, my she was in my top. Of like three or four, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Three. Yeah. I was saying, like, this felt like Galavado as La Llorona as like a telenovela star, mm -hmm. like just with the dramatics and the way she was doing it, but it was like a campy dramatic mm -hmm. and taking this like very positive turn on this otherwise like very, very dark story. Mm -hmm. Right. Like right. the story of La Llorona is incredibly dark. Mm -hmm. And so I really did enjoy this kind of playful, campier. A side of La Llorona and B side of Galavado. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was very, very. I thought it was nice. Yes. So, should we get quick thoughts on the first two people that we discussed? I was, I was about to say, if you want to give your thoughts, Lana, on the first two. Okay, they'll be quick and yeah. painless. Uh, Regina Voce as Walter Mercado. Eh. I wasn't that impressed. I felt like it was lacking something. I don't know. But mm -hmm. again, I feel like not knowing who these characters are limits me to saying I like them or not like them. Sure. Um, because I don't know what how they are, you know, how they are. But I will say I thought her performance of this person was a little lackluster. I wanted see, I I, I like extreme in all care. Like if you go do a character, give me the extreme of the character for for some part, at some part. Sure, I, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I don't think it was, ex I don't, I don't know. I, I, but I think it might be just me not knowing who Walt, who they are, but I thought it was okay. It was okay. okay. So I had Walter um, as my third favorite of the night mm -hmm. and um, Logan had Walter as fourth. Safe. So, Safe. so we, I, we just had our gala and um, drinking. I, I can, I can agree with that. You know what? I think I can agree with that. I think third, it will be, Gala, fourth would be, yeah, Rahina. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I think so. Awesome. Uh huh. Cool. And then we had Magos. I, you know, see, this is the thing. Again, I don't know who the character is, but I thought she did a good job at playing whatever the character was. I found her enjoyable. Like, I chuckled. I think some of the jokes didn't land. Sure. Sure. And maybe I didn't, they, they knew the reference, so it wasn't funny to them. But then when she said that, I was like, I, I chuckled because I don't know no better. And when you don't know no better, you just laugh at anything. And I just thought she was absolutely delightful. But I guess they were just like, yeah, you're not killing the references. So, <laughs> But I thought she was enjoyable. And I thought she looked beautiful. Yeah. She always does. She was sixth for both of us. Yeah. We both would have had her in the bottom two, but she she would have been much higher than our seventh. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I probably I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So next is Christian as Veronica Castro, who was one of the people I knew, um, but she is a Mexican actress, singer, producer, presenter. Um, she started her career as an actress. Um, and her, I believe, um, Christian's drag name actually comes from Veronica's, uh, son, Christian Castro. It's the exact same spelling. Oh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I just figured that was Christian's actual name. <laughs> I don't know that to be a hundred percent true. I'm just, it's the same spelling. So there might be some yeah. sort of, I just think that's how Christian is spelled probably. But Either potentially, yeah. maybe. So it would, it would be great if it was, but if it's not, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I did write down a note mm -hmm. um, as they were doing the intros. Where did I put? I put Christian one from the moment they did intros. <laughs> yep. Christian yeah. came into this uh, snatch game knowing exactly what she was going to do. She was like, "This is what I do. This is what she I do." She is quite literally a celebrity impersonator. Like she has, mm -hmm. I think, dozens of celebrity impersonations she does. This I'm is just a challenge that is hand built 
for Christian to win. Mm -hmm. Anybody who is going to, who does this, like, like you said, uh, impersonator, but who's just a good actress and who could pull from anything and anybody. The second that, like you said, David, the second they introduced her, she was like, so, 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 and so, so, and so, and so, and so, and so, and you, and you, and you, and like going, and she I was stood like, up. and she stood, like, everybody she else called was like, it her show. <laughs> right. She was ready for this moment, and she showed it. I was like, you won, period. I, I usually don't pull this up during challenge discussions, but she did what yeah. needed to mm -hmm. be done, and I'm for not going to sure. leave it up that long because I don't want to block David. But <laughs> she really, truly did what needed to be done. Like it she was, understood the assignment. For this sure. is one of this is going to go down as one of the best snatch game performances of all time. Mm -hmm. I was saying earlier before you joined Lana that since I didn't know a lot of these characters, my main critique in in judging them was how well do you make me feel like I know this character exactly and. It did not take long at all for me to feel like, oh, okay, I know exactly who this character is. It was so developed and and so like niche. I don't mm -hmm. know. She, she she did a flawless job. Like, yeah, she I agree. Good. Like, I, not knowing who this character is and how they portrayed themselves on a regular basis, I felt like, you know what? I do know her sort of. I kind of can understand. She's just one of these outgoing, very loud personas who's like, everything is mine. I own the world and you're just living in it. And she's like an over the top personality. And it could be anything. Like we can relate it to like a Wendy Williams or a um, mm -hmm. or a um, a New York on, on reality TV. Just anybody who's over the top, she reminded me of. And I'm like, I might not know this character, but I know this character. So it, it made it. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. She won the second she introduced herself. Yep. Yeah. And she really transformed, like, yeah. even with how she did her makeup. Like, Is it just me? Or does she kind of look like Manila Luzon? Mm -hmm. I was getting Manila specifically in the Big Bird look. Okay. And I think it's the eye makeup. I, I, I don't know. It just I She reminded me of someone, and I didn't know who it was. But anyway, she did great. She did great. Fantastic. She was number one. Period. My number yeah. one. Period. Okay. Of the snatch game. I'm gonna sing a Eurovision song just now. I'm not going to because we have to talk about our Hennis as Gloria Trevi. So Going from the top oh to the bottom. She really was not aided whatsoever by sitting next to uh Christian. But yeah, so Gloria Trevi, I checked David, was the premier guest judge of Drag Race Espana season two. Okay. So um, and she is dubbed the queen of Mexican pop is like her title. All of her music is phenomenal. And again, I mean, we heard a song of hers in this episode that I thought was absolutely incredible. And we'll talk about it. But this just went nowhere. It really just, there was, n I don't even, I can't even honestly critique this properly because it just did not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there was one point where you could tell Christiane was like, kind of making fun of one of her responses and trying to volley off of her. And in that like moment, I immediately saw in her eyes how defeated she was. She was yeah. like, I don't know what to say to this. And she just retreated into herself. Like it was kind of sad to watch, honestly. Um, I really felt bad for her because this was a struggle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, See, this is another thing with me not knowing who these characters are. I don't know if it was good or bad. I don't know who this person is. I just felt like she just gave a performance. Was it a, it was just a performance for me. I don't, not good, not bad, just a performance. Because I feel like even when um, Christian was trying to volley off her, like you said, David, she was like, eh, I don't know. Here, this is, you know, she gave a little thing and she, I, I, I don't, it wasn't great, but I don't know if it was, I don't know how, how good it's supposed to be. I don't, what if this right. person is actually very bored, that boring, what if the person <laughs> is actually that way, since I don't know who she is and what her character is, the person could be, because that's something that I will talk about when we get to Matraka, I feel like 
we don't know if I don't know if this character is someone who is a monotone, laid back kind of person with just you know who's just cute. We don't know that. I don't know what her thing is. So I feel a little inadequate of saying if her performance was good or bad. I just feel like it was just it was fine for what it was. That's fair. Like I won't go as far to say uh, that it it was bad. It just I could feel like she felt defeated, and if I feel that from you. That's not a great sign. Um, but yeah, since I don't know the character, I can't say it was terrible. It just didn't give me much. Yeah. Next is Matraka. Matraka was doing Adela Misha, who is a Mexican radio and TV journalist. Um, and she, yes. I was say, let me. This is what I mean because this character seems like just a monotone character, and that's just who she is as a character. But Matraka did it so well that she was just like she gave us the essence of this woman, and I feel like that's what was missing with uh, our Hennis. Like we don't know what I don't really know the character, but I I do I don't think it was that what she was doing. But I felt like this is what this person was, and they responded to her doing this like it was very smart it was very like uh, she's like a um she gives me like one of those news reporters like somebody on the view like one like a joy behar kind of person just like not um, well not joy behar because she's kind of loud and, and but maybe like remember like megan mccain was very she wasn't loud, just, you know, monotone. A Julie Chen, if you will. Not <laughs> going to be loud, but also, but very in, deci incisive of what she's trying to say. Very, just, you know, in, she knows what she's saying. Everything is, 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 is precise. precise. She yeah. knows it's intentional. Her words are intentional. I think that's what this character was. Her thoughts are intentional. Her jokes are intentional. And she's like, I'm not a loud person. I just do. I just say what I'm gonna say, and my joke is my joke. And I think it resonated with the judges and the, you know, because and the panel because I think that's who she was. Well, I was gonna say as well. Um, Adela Misha is also actually known for pioneering Big Brother Mexico. So I mean, that'll do it. Julie Chen, period. Okay. Yeah. I thought this was really good. This was my number two. She really did just such a good job. Truly, genuinely, just incredible. It, unfortunately, she was in a snatch game next to Christian doing, you know, a character she has probably done for 10 plus years at the minimum. Uh, so I don't <laughs> I don't think there was any universe when Sarka was actually <laughs> gonna win. I think my favorite characterization, honestly, was Matraka's. Mm -hmm. But yep. yeah. I I agree that it, it was a it was a character that you def, like like Christian. It was a character that you knew without knowing who they were. So I appreciated that. Like you can you can be the opposite of bubbly, but still not be monotonous and boring. And she was not boring at all. So I really liked what she did. Um, and yeah, I feel like I knew who this character is and it was another transformation. Like this does not look like Matraka to me. So I had no idea who they were because they did not uh, give us a thing. No. Like we went right from literally this is a challenge to it's snatch game. And I was like, do, do, do. We, we literally earlier were like, I, I announced it and David was like, and cut to snatch game. These literally, right. that's what it was. I was like, oh my God. Okay. We I don't need like, to know the backstory of why they pick these characters. Okay, I, was like, I don't know who these characters are anyway. No. And y'all just no. not even go give us like, tell us who they are. Like, I didn't know when this thing came up, I was like, who is who? I don't know who anybody is right now. Yeah. And when they went down the line and they said, this was Matrock, I was like, that is Matrock. Did she not was. know. I did she not was. know. I was very confused, but she transformed <laughs> and looked amazing doing it. So great. Good on you, yeah. gal. Good on yeah. you. And so last up, we have Lady Kero. Lady Kero is doing Luna Gil, uh, who is an, inf she's a trans influencer, DJ, uh, beautiful woman, a woman of grace and beauty. Um, from what I can see, she's gorge. So work girl. Um, unfortunately, 
this gave me boobs. Yeah, I wrote down, Kara looks like Jimbo <laughs> when I first saw everybody. I was like, oh, so you're so not Jimbo. wrong. You're so not wrong. <laughs> like, truly, genuinely, you're not wrong. I said the first thing I saw it. I was like, is this the mechanic again? That's literally what I said. It That's just, what I was like. This is the third time we've seen this kind of third look. time. I'm yeah, not I, tired. Yeah, I just I don't understand why everything comedic with Lady Keto has to be boobs, boobs. Look at my boobs. And I think the same way about Jimbo. No shade. I like I like Jimbo, but I think the same way about Jimbo sometimes. Well, Jimbo. There's more to Jimbo. To funny outside of just boobs. yes, baloney. <laughs> I'm kidding. I enjoy Jimbo's comedy, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just using it as a very recent example. Right. But yeah, no, I, uh, this was number five for Same. me. Same. It was my um, number five. See, I told you we weren't going to have different I know. I thought you were going to be like, oh, Kara was great. <laughs> like, I Lady Kara was my winner. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, I would lo have loved to say that because I think Lady Kara should have a win in some capacity. I don't know what challenge, but something. I like Lady Kato. Oh, the design challenge. I do still think Lady Kato should have won the design challenge. Um, yeah, I was disappointed. This is this is the example of me of a one note character that didn't give me anything, whereas Gala was a one note character that gave me a lot. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, that's like I was saying earlier. Like I was judging people off of what kind of characterization they gave for me, and they're just this didn't go anywhere for me. Like, I was very disappointed in her. And the fact that she thought she was going to win this week really confused me. I was like, well, what am to I To be fair, the her? judges did give her very high praise. So if you're going to get very high same. praise for that, like, I guess. I, I mean, and I feel like maybe she thought she was going to win because she knew this character. And she was like, I did exactly what you asked me to do. And you all liked it and laughed and appreciated it. Because they did. They gave her so much praise about it. And then she was like, and they gave me good critiques about my runway. So maybe, yeah. maybe. No. But no. No. <laughs> no. No. It was okay. It was fine. It was fine. I, I I still am just surprised it was in the top. But I haven't, I'm not familiar with this character. Maybe people in the comments will be like, wow, you have no idea what you're talking about. She should have won. So, and knows? please let us know in the comments who was I mean, your favorite you on Snatch like, Game. So, yeah, we feel that way. Tell um, us. Because I just don't get it. Yeah. We had a very quick moment before the runway where uh, Christian is talking about um, how he plans to propose to his wife. <laughs> we are proposing to our wife. Yep. Gonna propose to my wife. Hey, Lana, yeah. wifey, will you be my wife? Yes. Why? Oh. No, I think there's something going on with the subtitles because 100%. Ever since the first episode, we've been introduced to uh, Christian's partner as Christian's wife. So when he said, I'm going to propose to her, I ha I literally had to rewind. And I'm like, wait, did I miss something? You're going to propose to your wife? So I don't know. Maybe people get married multiple times in Mexico. I don't know. So I, so. I think it's lost in translation. I really believe it was just I'm because we, I, he's, not, he's not proposing to his wife. He's proposing to his <laughs> partner. Or slash girlfriend slash fiance, whatever. Whatever the term whatever they, they want to choose to call themselves. So, yes. but they're yes. <laughs> I was listening for the word esposa uh, when I reminded yeah. it, and I did not hear that word, and that's what I know wife to be. So, yeah, I d no, I didn't. I didn't hear it either. But we also, in that same vein, get um, the breakdown of our is is. It, the, the beginning of the end of Artenis. It She's, you know, getting very emotional. Like, everyone was gathering around Christian when Christian was talking, and Artenis didn't. And was like, I just don't want to be disrespectful to you, but, like, I'm going through it right now, and, like, I have a lot of stuff going on regarding my family, and you talking about your family is just putting me... Basically, she was, like, basically putting in my, me in my feelings about my own family. Um, and unfortunately, this was the moment where I was like, okay, they're sending God Hennis home. But, like, I really, I appreciate that we got 
I appreciate that she was able to have this almost catharsis throughout this entire episode of just like being at a low, breaking down, giving a great performance at the end of the episode. We'll talk about it. And then kind of just like maybe having a full circle moment. And I really do hope that was what she got out of this. But yeah, it was emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty sad. Like it just felt like not only was she a little bit defeated from the challenge, but she had this personal thing going on as well. So it was all just weighing her down. So it was really hard to watch. Um, I really felt for her. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I agree with everything you all just said. Honestly, that's just it. Mm -hmm. Work, Diva. <laughs> you better work, Diva. The house down boots, Mama. Yes, God. <laughs> anyway... Let's talk about Valentina and Lolita. And I'm going to be honest, for me, in my opinion, Valentina ate this down. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, but I also thought Lolita looked really Lolita good. Looks Gorgina. Lolita looks Gorgina. If we're doing the competition of Valentina versus Lolita, currently for me, it's 3 3. Oh. Mm. I really need to go back and figure out where I would give points out. But yeah, Valentina yeah. won this week for me. My only thing is like you could tell she was like a bit constricted with her hands. Oh, yeah. And it felt like if she moved that's much, why, the whole And that's why I pulled this this photo specifically because she cannot raise her arm above here. <laughs> and I love the blonde on her. Like we don't see her I, in blonde very often. But. I don't think I I don't remember ever seeing her in blonde. Neither. It really stood out. So it I like really, it. Especially this platinum blonde. Mm -hmm. Gorge. And yeah, Lolita looks phenomenal. I don't think there's... Last week was the only time where I was like, ooh, Lolita. Yep. We remember the uh, the whole spill that you and Eve went on while Lana and I just hung out. Literally. <laughs> 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 but yes, let's talk about the runway. Category is... A, Supernatural. Ooh, I was excited for this, but this was not what I expected. I was like, ooh, we're going to see monsters. Me too. I was like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get supernatural so monsters. I'm, so I'm, and all that stuff. I'm convinced this was not the wording they gave the girls when they got their list of runway looks to bring. Yeah. It, it, couldn't, like, it couldn't have been. It seems more like Mexico lore, like, like horror. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. That uh, you know the that the. Well, Day not of the everything Dead. would have been Dia de los Muertos that yeah, we saw have, on the like, runway. There I were just, a few different like yeah, characters. Was, I just thought it was going to be like Day of the Dead or like like you said Mexican lore that type yeah. of deal. That's what it looked yeah. like to me. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, but supernatural. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> AKA Night of a Thousand La Llorona's. Um, oh, I thought the first one was La Llorona. Nope. This is Argenis. David. Okay. So this was not the best night for Argenis, but when she came out, I oh, thought she looked so good. Gorgina. And I, I wrote down my score for her. But then later on, when they showed her just standing on the runway, they showed like a close up of her face. All of the little golden details in her face oh. made me bump her up even more. This is one of my favorite looks from the entire season. She looked damn good. I could not agree with you more. She looks so good. I was like, wait. First, when she came out with the, the the thing wrapped around, I was like, "That's even beautiful. That's so beautiful." And, and when she took it off, and then she took it off, and it was pants. pants. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's "Oh, pants!" I was like, "Not you coming in with the pants and pants. making the pants suit just and it fit her gorgeously and the gold and uh, then the makeup. Oh, don't get me started on this makeup. This makeup was top notch. Like I." I'm like, see, this is why she ain't get up and go hug Christiana, Christiana, because she was like, I got to get all these little gold specks on my face, and this, I got to do right. all that. So she ain't had time to go hugging everybody and, and being emotional and all that. She was like, let me pat my face down and get my all my little details in. Oh, Kennedy, 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 <laughs> Kennedy. Just, please. Yeah, it was Thank just you. so it was so intricate, like. 
I, it made me wonder how much time do they have to get ready because it looks like she spent like a four or five hours getting it can't, ready. It can't be that long because it's Drag Race, but right. yeah, no pants, 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 and makeup. <laughs> That's all I need. Um, no, this is gorge. Uh, this definitely is one of my favorite things I've had this war on the show. Mm -hmm. um, very impressed. Very, very, very impressed with with this Luke from our Hanif chameleon scores. <laughs> um, I think this is my highest score I've given her. I gave her a 92. Oh, wow. Wow. I, really loved it. I, I love it, too. I gave it a 95. I'm going to match your 92, actually, David. Okay. I forgot who this was for a second. It's a Hina Voce. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like this. I do like this. It just feels a little uneven. It feels like there's two completely different things going on and they never quite married each other. Um, so I don't know. Just the whole face and then everything else going on. They did not, they didn't flow for me. But she does look good. Like, she always looks good. So I do like the details here. I like the kind of glowing effect we get in the gown. Um, I like the lack of hair because we always see her in hair. So uh, this was something different for her. It just didn't all come. Bye -bye. Me. So hi, Kennedy. To interrupt. Kennedy wants to say bye to you both. Bye bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. See you. See, See you later. later. See you later. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm sorry for the interruption. Oh, you're fine. What do you think, Lana? I I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And I feel like on this runway, it was a lot of really, really, really good ones. And then it was like... <laughs> This one. It was okay. It was good. It was all right. I like the makeup more than I like the dress. I'll say that. But I liked it. It wasn't horrible. Oh, we can't hear you, Logan. I think you're muted. My microphone was <laughs> muted. I was like, again. Like, <laughs> I was wondering, I'm like, is it 100%. Nope. <laughs> It, having the handheld now, I forget when I turn it on and off because I literally have my thumb on the button. Oh, so that's okay. that's the issue. Okay. Um, yeah, no, makeup, amazing, wonderful, great. I have no clue what this is supposed to be. And I don't really think it was expressed in her like little talking moment about what it was. And if it was, I just really did not understand what the what the reference was supposed to be. The entire thing feels very disjointed. Um, I don't really, I don't really understand any of this. What I will say is, I really like the skirt. Mm -hmm. I think this like solid black panel into this like mesh with the whatever the light, the like sparkly situation is. I really like that. It kind of reminds me of Coco, the lighting on this. A skirt. little bit, like yeah, yeah, absolutely. Coco. Um, and again, if I'm missing a reference, let us know in the comments because I probably am. But I just, yeah, I wasn't, not one of my favorite things she's worn. Mm -hmm. So, scores. Um, I still gave it a decent score. I gave it an 83. I give it a 75. I'm going to give it a 70. La Llorona number one, Christian Peralta. Yeah, when she first came out, I was like, ooh, I really like this. Like, I like the creepy makeup on her. Like, her face was so unsettling. Even the wig, like, how it set on her. Like, everything from the neck up was really giving it to me. And I liked the robe she had on. But then she took it off. And honestly, she lost some points then. Uh, because I don't really like uh, this bodysuit she had going on. You could tell she's going for, like, a flesh uh, tone, but it just it 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 didn't it didn't give me the fantasy like I wanted it to. Yeah. I did like some of the beads on it, but I don't know. It didn't it didn't fully work for me once yeah. she took it off. It's still not bad. There's a lot to really like about this. 
I don't even think it's a bodysuit. I think the entire gown is one piece and it's just painted that way. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll give more context to that when I give my, my thought, but Lana, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, you're fine. You could have jumped on and did that. <laughs> don't be. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. I will. So my biggest thing with this is I actually think the painting of the bodysuit, the top part, I think is actually really well done. Um, and I really liked the way it looked pre-reveal. Uh, Post-reveal, I think it still looks fine. My issue is that same kind of gauntness of the the painting of the, the chest area does not extend to any other part of her body. And that's what throws it off for me. It's like, I would have liked mm -hmm. some of that shading in like the arms or in like the, the hip area, like just something to give it a little bit more. And I understand that we have like the, the black flames coming up. So like, I get it. I just, when they said they, I guess preferred this to the other La Llorona, I was kind of surprised uh, because I did not agree with that whatsoever. Um, uh, David, you look like you got something you want to say. Well, um, we'll get to it, but I actually do prefer this La Llorona. Um, well, I'll say this. Finally, we disagree. Sorry, Lana. <laughs> it's fine. We've been very agreeable this episode, myself and David. <laughs> Interesting. Well, Isn't I it? Didn't, I, I will say I didn't like this look at all. I mm -hmm. didn't like the makeup. I didn't like the hair. I mean... I think the bottom of the dress was okay. The top of the dress kind of threw me off. I kind of didn't like the top of the dress. I, I like the robe. I think I agree with you, David. Like when the robe was out, I was like, okay, cool. The robe is cute. Then she took it off and it just lost me. I was like, oh no, because I already found the makeup not, and I don't mind weird unsettling makeup. I don't mind that. I think that's the art form in itself and it's beautiful in its own art. I just don't feel like this was pulled off right like I, maybe it's time i don't know it's just something just feels off to me i feel like the shading from her face to like the top of her head where the wig starts is a little wonky i don't know it's just weird to me but i i like like i, said, I like the bottom of the dress i don't like the top of the dress yeah 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 mm. score okay right. I, first i will say like I guess my main issue is that like I'm actually getting horror makeup from from her face, and then the the gown is giving me beauty, like it's horror yeah. but make it beauty. So it's just the two things don't quite work together. It's like if she had gone more horror glamour with the makeup, horror glamour, <laughs> drag. Uh, but that would have worked better for me. Or if she had had more of a horrific looking outfit as well, that would have worked for me. Yeah, it's like she traded the middle line, but it wasn't, it was too back and forth and not enough for one side. For she me. didn't do what needed to be done on either side and instead did both subpar. So, right, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say subpar. I still really like this. middle Fair. ground. Just middle, middle ground. Yeah, we'll middle, middle ground. ground. Like she did both parts minimally, not okay. fully. She turned in the assignment for both things on time and not a second late. You know, she's actually my third highest score of the night. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gave her an 85. I will give it a 69. Nice. nice. I am gonna give it a 65. Ooh. Not as nice. <laughs> Galavado. This is another one where there's things I like and then things that I'm not crazy about. So I, everything going on with her face and head, I was obsessed with. It yeah. was so bizarre. It looked like something out of American Horror Story freak show. I don't know. But then we had the outfit and I think I got where she was going with it. I just... It felt a little costumey and a little bit cheap. Um, so I preferred it when she took the mask off, even though like that headpiece was kind of cool. But uh, I don't know. It didn't it didn't quite come together. I still do like it, though. Like, I know I'm sounding critical. I still enjoyed it. I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. Yeah. For me, I felt like her face was 
everything. That makeup, everything. Her face, the in the ball cap. That, that was everything. And I was obsessed when she took the headpiece off. But when you, but I love the headpiece, and the headpiece was amazing. But and that's the problem because the headpiece is amazing. Your face is amazing. Once you take the headpiece off, the rest of the outfit loses something because the headpiece was such a strong piece of that outfit. And your face is great and amazing and painted down. But then the outfit is just like, then it's like, now it's just a lie, a, a, a suit with these things off your hip. And it's kind of like, yeah, uh, like a, a latex bodysuit with this right. like crinkly sort of situation over it. And then this and, skirt. And I want to love everything about this look because I love a lot of the pieces of this look. Mm -hmm. But I can't love it all together because it's like the headpiece was such a strong piece. And it was like, oh, that makes the outfit interesting. You take it off. Oh, the makeup's great. But the headpiece, though, it's not there anymore. And I can't <laughs> love the whole thing because the headpiece isn't there. But I love her face. So it was just very confusing. It just didn't all come together. I feel like this, this, the outfit needed more besides the headpiece to make it go wow it was good but it wasn't wow but her face was i'm obsessed the makeup job and how she looked i think this is because we all know galavaro is gorgeous in and out of drag period Gorgeous. and out of drag i'm like such a handsome like just mm -hmm. so good looking there's a reason she has a boyfriend in every uh, principality right. in and Mexico. Which is, which like, it makes and, sense. And I get it. She's very good looking. But it's like this moment in this makeup is where I was like, oh, you are really good looking in drag. Like, yeah. she's had moments on this room. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. That's pretty. But this one, I was like, oh, you're absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. stunning in drag but then you took the headpiece off and it's like great but now the outfit loses something so I'm mm -hmm. yeah how can she look so creepy and pretty at the same time and pretty time? at the same time it's weird it's it's, it's it's a very it's a very dangerous and difficult thing to uh be able to do and i think she did it really well i'm gonna be really honest the face is the only thing i like about this mm -hmm. i okay. was not really a fan of it i don't necessarily know what it was i understand her reference being a dragonfly. And I think that very much so comes through in the makeup. And I understand the headpiece in context with everything. For me, unfortunately, and I don't think I've ever thought this about Galavado on this season, the look looks cheap. Mm -hmm. It looks, mm. it doesn't, it looks like she could have made this in a design challenge. Mm. Okay. For me, I just like, I wasn't like the biggest fan, but the makeup is just so incredibly done. Mm -hmm. Again, the fact that she did this in whatever kind of time constraint they had, fabulous. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, no. Otherwise, no, but scores. Well, this is a weird week because I feel like I wish I could score individual parts of looks <laughs> instead of them as a whole because you can't and you won't, David. I, I won't. <laughs> I'm, I'm really gonna give her a generous score because I really liked what she did with her face and head. Okay. I gave her an 81. Okay, for me, I would give it. Because I do love her makeup. See, that, I'm, I'm with you, David. I'm very torn about this look. For the makeup and the headpiece alone, it gets an 85. Everything else is, yeah. The face is a fall, and the outfit is a plead. So she's going to get a 50 from me. <laughs> And welcome to La Llorona Part 2, the Lady Quero edition. This is another one where there's a lot of things that I like about this. Mm -hmm. I think she looks great. I love the wig. I love the blood and how she incorporated it into the look. Um, I do feel like this is a little on the nose. Like, it's not outside of the box at all. There's one thing that really held this back for me. Like, significantly, it was distracting me. And I'm wondering if you all felt the same way. 
why didn't she paint her arms and her hand? I, I saw mm-hmm. it. I saw mm-hmm. it. Yeah, everything's pale, and then she's got these dark arms. It just really took me out of the fantasy of her being La Llorona. Um, so I really docked quite a bit of points just for that. I mean, she nobody really has a low score for me this week, but yeah, this was on the lower end for me just for that reason. But there's a lot that I like about it too, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. I did see the hand and I was like, ah, okay. Didn't do, maybe ran out of time. Didn't have time to do so yeah. possible. I thought this look was okay. It wasn't my favorite. I do think I like the other one better, mm. but only because I felt like the other one was done more crisp more clean like like sure. not saying this i feel like this is um like somebody custom did the other one and then somebody's grandmother helped her make this dress not saying that's a bad oh, thing because yeah. you know it's just look abuela was like i'm gonna make you a dress and you know it's gonna be pre- and it's pretty and it's pretty yeah. for what things were but i don't know if it's pretty enough for a runway there's That's a level the of, there's a level of polish to the way that Christian interpreted mm-hmm. um La Llorona in a way that Lady Caro does maybe not as polished. Yeah. Christian polished? What? 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 Christian g- already the winner that? of this season? What? <laughs> I just I've already put her in like I've already put her fo- her promo photo in the like grid of Drag Race 2023 winners. So it's fine. Um it's, I I definitely see exactly what you're both saying about this look. And I actually think the I'm going to say grunginess. That's the word I'm going to use to describe it. And it's not the most accurate. But, like, the grunginess of this is actually what makes me like it a lot. Um, I think knowing the story of La Llorona as well, that might have a little bit of something to do with it. Um but I, I just think this interpretation of La Llorona, for me, just knowing this, the story, and again, being an American and not being Mexican, for me, this embodied the story of La Llorona a little bit more effectively for me than what Christiane did. Mm. Um, and her acting on this runway was fantastic. Mm-hmm. She put her entire soul into that acting moment and I, it really did bring up the entire it, bring, it brought up the look for me I'm gonna be honest it really elevated the entire experience for me so fair scores I gave her an 80 I'll give her an 85 and I'm gonna give her a 90 okay. I mean because I feel like I, I it's not bad yeah. it's just yeah it's different yeah. like I said there's a level of polish to Christian that Lady Cardoz doesn't have Mm-hmm. Oh, Ooh. matraca, traca, calaca. Y'all, I ain't got boom, my shala- fan. Boom, shakak, shakak, I ain't shakak. got my fan with me because yes. of it, but period, I, period. Hold on. I'm going to need to find out. I'm going to need to find a better, because I don't want to block David right now. Oh, I was because just gonna I'm, like, well, I'm just going to leave this up the whole time. So I, we, okay. I can still see I, David. Yeah. I want to make it clear. I wrote down my score before any judgment so mm-hmm. i already had my opinions on this look but man when she came out i was so impressed what i really like about this um is like when everybody was standing up you saw all six of the people being judged she stood out so much above everybody else because she went for something colorful she went for something bright which absolutely worked for her um it's just this bizarre character. Like her face, I could not stop staring at. It looks like she's melting, kind of. I don't know. Everything about this was so bizarre and beautiful and fascinating and unique. And I don't have enough adjectives to describe how much I like this. This is my favorite look of the season so far. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you this. Matraka does something on these, on these runways that not a lot of queens do and for someone like myself 
who has not watched a whole lot of Drag Race and a lot of runways, she makes me want to go find out everything about this culture that she's representing. Like I literally want to go and do the research on what this is, what the what the origins is behind this. She makes me think. And I appreciate that so much because that's how we learn. That's how we grow. And because I don't know who this, what the cultural reference is behind it, but now I'm, I'm going to go find out and I'm going to look up everything about this culture so I can learn and appreciate it because I'm so blown away of how stunning and how amazing, even in this look where it's supposed to be something, I don't know if it's supposed to be scary or if it's supposed to be what it represents, but it's beautiful. It's so beautiful from the makeup, even the teeth when she was just like, ah, it mm -hmm. was so beautiful. I was mesmerized. Like I literally stopped. I had to pause when she turned that corner and I was like, hold on. It's too early in the morning for me to be screaming like this because <laughs> I got people sleeping in this house. And I was just like, but I'm about to scream at how amazing this look is. Matraka makes me want to do research. Not a lot of people so far that I've seen made me want to go do research. But I'm Googling, I'm Wikipedia, and I'm uh, Encyclopedia Britannica and all about what this culture is because I'm intrigued to learn now. And yeah. I appreciate that. And I thank her for making me want to learn more about this culture because it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Ugh. I want to quickly add when I watch episodes of drag race, I'm pretty quiet. Um, especially if I'm by myself, I watch this episode by myself, but when she went, when she Queen. came out, I go, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I yes, I let like out this cackles because I was just so like blown away. I was like, Oh, 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 I paused <laughs> because I was about to start screaming at how good this was. And I was like, I have a roommate. Relax, girl, relax. <laughs> I watched with my friend and he hadn't watched anything of this season, but he was literally like, Oh my God. And the entire time she's on the runway, my jaws just drop. I'm like, so I did a little bit of cursory research mm. uh, very, very quickly. So the um, the reference that Matraka is making here is to the Alebrije, mm -hmm. um, which are brightly colored Mexican folk art sculptures of mythical creatures. Okay. I love so it. they can be kind of a, a whole yeah. lot of anything. Um, yeah, so they are the original creator of the Alebrije or the Monos de Madera, which is the other way to refer to them, was an artist by the name of Manuel Jimenez. Mm -hmm. um, and the these uh, sculptures actually come out of uh, Oaxaca. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and but then the um, the invention of the term Alebrije originated in Mexican City. Love Mexico that. City. Okay. Mexico City. Um, I love that. Yeah, there's like a whole story. I'm I'm seeing a bunch of these like um, stories, but they're very they're um, chimera like creatures um, that are like very cartoonish. They don't, from what I can see here, just from the, the small bit of research I've done, um, it doesn't seem like they inherently have to be scary or horror based. Mm -hmm. um, but this really does fit supernatural if that's what the category was mm -hmm. given to them. So. I mean, there really is not anything else that needs to be said, quite frankly. This is one of the best things I've ever seen on Drag Race. It's so and like, it's so I, good. Scores. I don't give scores this high very often. I give this a 98. Wow. Over freaking flowing. My cup is still at the bottom of the ocean. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Period. We, so we, we have created a new um <laughs> we have full cups, we have overflowing cups, and then we just have duh. duh. Like you know, <laughs> this is so great. This For people so that great. haven't seen, I think we did it first. Uh, it was the all stars finale. All stars yeah. finale, yeah. 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 Um duh. Hello. <laughs> so good. Magos. So we start out, and I just wanna I wanna start. I'm gonna pull the image, but her just going. 
I loved it. <laughs> it was so camp in the best possible way. Go ahead, David. <laughs> it was camp. I don't know about the best possible way. I, when she first came out with this big toothy monster, it felt extremely homemade costume to me. So I was glad she took it off. Um, I do like this. I don't love it. I really like the um, what's going up her legs there. I think that's really pretty. Um, overall, it's it's not the most supernatural. Like as far as my ignorant American self goes, I don't get a lot of supernatural from her look this this evening. But she still looks very pretty. Um, definitely not one of her worst looks this season but not my favorite tonight. So I don't have a lot to say. I was, I was a little whelmed. I like, I, this is what I wanted when I, they said supernatural, when she first came out in the costume, I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. So we're about to get this supernatural monster turning into something. And I wasn't mad that it looked homemade because I was like, that's what we expect from supernatural. We wanted something that's weird and creepy and, and, and when she came out and was doing that, that was like, this is fun. This is what I wanted from Supernatural. Everybody was giving beautiful Supernatural. She was giving very much weird kind of, you know, Supernatural. And I was like, okay, I'm here for that. Because I feel like that's who Margot is. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's who she, you know, the character that she can bring to a runway. And so I'm like, I don't mind that. And then when she took it off, I was like, and that's beautiful. I was impressed with this. I thought she looked beautiful. And even she changed her makeup. Then that they acknowledged for finally and seeing that she is listening to them. Right. But I don't think she had to, honestly, because I think it, she is perfectly perfect just the way she is and the makeup that she does. But I thought it was great. I loved the reveal. I thought she looked beautiful. And I am I enjoyed it. I appreciated it. Yeah, so I did a little bit of research as well into the um, the reference that Magos was making. Um, and so the reference she was making was to the Nahual. I'm, I might be saying that wrong. I'm so sorry. But um, the Nahual are supposed to be uh, personal guardian spirits uh, within Mesoamerican Indian cultures. Um, that reside in an animal. Usually the examples were like deer, jaguar, mm -hmm. some birds. Um, and in some culture, some Mesoamerican cultures believed that the Nahuatl is the animal that powerful men, unfortunately in that time it was just men, uh, transform themselves into to do evil. Uh, and the word derives from the Nahuatl word Nahuali, which means disguise. So it's like the, this animal spirit becomes part of the human, which is why there was the original um, character that they called, they said looked like a boogeyman, the judges did. And I was like, weird, but okay. Um, and then she transforms into like the human version. Mm -hmm. I, um, I love it. I love that she took that and it really feels like a modern take on that. And I, I really enjoyed this. I, I definitely think there was a level of polish maybe missing. And I don't I don't think it was the, it was it wasn't the most polished look ever. I don't think Magos has really Magos hasn't given us all of the most polish in the world. That's not what I'm expecting when I see her looks. What I'm look when I what I see when I look at her looks is a level of characterization and a level of storytelling. And that's what I've grown to really appreciate from her. Um, and I got that on this runway. I, I, I thought the reveal itself, the logistics of the reveal, I thought was really good. Um, this look, I think is cute, actually. It, it's it's incredibly basic, but I think it's cute. Like, I, I was really impressed with this. I thought it was good. So, scores. Yeah, it is good. It's good. Um, I gave it a 74. I will give it an 89. I'm going to give it a 90... One, because I can, <laughs> and I decided in that moment. <laughs> Before we get too far away from talking about this topic, I'm ready for these Mexico girls who were eliminated to put up their looks on Instagram. Please, we want to cover so them. Uh, uh, it was Vermelia. Vermelia, yeah. 
And it looks oh. like she would have ate up most of these girls. Uh, so what, so what we're dragging. learning, it, what we're learning, yes. What we're learning is that Vermelia just got the worst possible runway draw that she absolutely could have. Mm -hmm. Because the rest of her package is great. So... Yeah. I'm waiting um, to see Lana's reaction because she's looking it up, right? I am right as we speak. Oh, I'm looking. Word. I saw right. her reaction last week as she was looking at Pixie after oh, I mentioned that. I just fell like, okay, hold on, I'm going to Romelli right now. <laughs> just, just. Ah, y'all keep talking. You'll know when I find <laughs> well, it. You yes. will know. Yes. <laughs> so, so we get called Regina Voce is safe. Our top three of the week are Lady Kero, Christian Parata, and Madraka. I would have swapped Lady Kero for Galavado. Oh. Yeah. Based oh. on the six that were out there, yes. Oh my God. She would have ate some of these girls she down. Literally would have ate them. <laughs> oh my God. It was, oh. But see, them judges probably been saying something stupid, and I would have been real mad because I'm like, y'all know she ate them down. Y'all know. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I need Pixie to go on and put that up there because mm. I I I need Pixie to go and put hers up there, please and thank you. I know she what just happened another, today. She put up another look. Um, I think it was a backup she brought for the Maria Felix runway. It's gorge. Mm -hmm. It's oh, gorge. Man. Um, <laughs> Hold on. What I was like, about? it's not the look she showed on the show. I was like, but she she said Maria Felix in the caption. I was like, oh, okay, great, cool. Um, but yes, we have our top three here. Our winner, duh. They were starting to make me think that uh, they were going to give it to Matraka. I felt like they should have gave it to Matraka. <laughs> they were they were definitely pointing out things they didn't like about Christian, and right. that seemed to be what they were focusing on the most. So they had almost convinced me. That Matraka was going to get this one. I mean, one? I feel like it could go either way again. I, I feel like, because see, this is the thing. I feel like maybe this should have been another Matraka duo win with somebody else because I yeah. understand why Christiane won because she killed the Snatch Game. Absolutely <laughs> murdered the Snatch Game. But I felt like right behind her was Matraka. Right behind her. And that her. look. And then that look, Ugh. Matraka blew her away, like destroyed Christiane on the runway. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if that is what we're doing, if we're doing both things and we're judging on both things, Matraka edged her out, like edged yeah. her out completely. I think Matraka's look outdid her performance. Yeah. And, you know, but Matraka's look and her performance outdid Christiane and her, her performance and her look. I just feel yeah. like Matraka edged her out. But I kind of feel like if they would go, I felt like this should have been a double another double yeah. win and I would have been perfectly that. happy with that because both of them ate down on different yeah. things so I, I would have been like yes 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 but I guess they didn't want to do that again I, I well, just wish we, God, I'm sorry I, I wish we kind of had a rubric for how they judge their wins like what percentage inconsistently of the main, yeah. mm -hmm. what percentage of the main challenge are you counting is it right who knows is it 80 percent? is it 50 percent? i don't know i just kind of want to know like how much weight the main challenge gets compared to the runway unfortunately because, i don't think you're gonna get that because i honestly yeah. believe it changes every episode yeah which and shouldn't this but... episode uh the runway obviously didn't have much weight at all oh literally no weight whatsoever <laughs> um so yes, the bottom three, Gala, Magos, and Argenis. Again, I would have slapped, swapped Gala with Lady Kato. Yeah, I thought for sure Gala was going to be called safe first among this group. I don't, and I can tell you the exact reason why. Well, I have a reason why, too, and I think it's probably the same thing. Uh, because she was set up to send Argenis home. Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. There is mm -hmm. no other. There is no other scenario. We literally saw it last week yep. with Arjenis sending home Serena Morena. Yeah, like we, she was. I'm I'm expecting a couple more lip syncs from Gala, and then someone's going to send Gala home on her third lip sync. It feels so just repetitive, and mm -hmm. it. I figured out what this season. It feels formulaic. It mm. feels like formulaic Drag Race. Yeah. And I, I don't like that. I see what you're saying, but there's so much I like about this season. But yeah, it really I, just I'm, comes And I'm talking about that from a production standpoint mm -hmm. only. I think otherwise, these this is one of my favorite casts in a long time. Mm -hmm. 
this this cast top to bottom is spectacular and i'm just like they are not getting a season that they deserve right there's no In, real weak links honestly no i don't even i wouldn't even say that miss viarta was a weak link no no I, like, think, yeah, I think i don't think i don't i agree i don't think they were weak uh, weak links I feel like, like you said, some people got the worst draw in the runway show, and then they didn't set up this, these competitions in a way. Anybody who's the acting challenge, oh, these next three, you you just in trouble. Every like they didn't spread out and set up these challenges where it, it could be spread amongst everybody to have a chance to shine. Because it's like if you're bad acting then you're going to be bad at these next three, four challenges because they all act in challenges. And it's, and it's not like, always this way, Lana. And I know but, that's been your experience. But that's how it's been recent. since I watched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was gonna say specifically, I was going to say specifically this and All Stars 8, it very much so felt like that. And Espana, same thing. And Espana, yeah, absolutely. It was just same thing. Like if you, all the challenges, all the acting challenges was lumped together and then you have the design challenges and then you have... Yeah the you know the talent parts it yeah. was so like but then i guess look at france as an example of a really i i'm gonna say really really well produced i mean but they ex externally from the judging i will externally from well, the judging the judging i see and i'm not even thinking about the judging i'm thinking the way the way they uh set up the show and mm -hmm. like set up the challenges and like france is even doing the same thing because the, we just saw two action challenges back to back and it's like, are we got to get another acting challenge after this? And it's like, I don't know. So it's kind of like, why don't we spread them out some? Why don't we have an acting challenge one week? And then we have a design challenge or something else. A performance A performance challenge. challenge and another thing. And then we can go back to another acting challenge. But why put all the acting challenges in a block? Because if one girl is not good at acting, she is going to struggle for the next three weeks if they let her stay. But then they probably right. kick her out the first week because she did bad. Pixie yep. Dixie, she was gone because she wasn't that great. But then we see stuff that she's bringing out of her closet. Like, this is what I would have worn. We're like, dang it. We missing <laughs> some really good stuff because they're yeah. not setting it up where everybody can get a moment to say, yeah, you know. But And that's my only thing. But I do think... I. I this was set up for Gala to send Ahenna's home. Like there is no other reason why Gala was should have been in that bottom two. Like no mm -hmm. other reason why her performance was solid and her her runway look was solid. There's no reason she should have been in the bottom two. Absolutely not. It should have been Lady Keto. Or, or it should have been Rahina. Like, I, no. Like, I was thinking Mar Margaret. Uh, Margaret. Or Margaret, whatever, too. She could go there, too. But anybody else but this one, <laughs> this just shouldn't have been it. This yeah. wasn't it. This wasn't but it. But this lip sync. This. We, it took us six episodes <laughs> to get a damn good lip sync. It's Gloria Trevi's Abrante Peras. Oh my good lord Jesus. <laughs> this is... Uh, I had to watch it three times because I kept missing things. And then I would re-watch it and I was like, oh my god, when did that happen? Oh my god, what? Like, <laughs> they are all over everything. Gala is ends up just in her latex bodysuit and looking amazing, rips off the bald cap. Oh my! I was God. like, "No, girl, don't do, don't do." Oh, oh, oh. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay then. And that's yeah. not her real hair. That's a wig. That's a hair right. wig. And she didn't snatch that wig off, take it off. That's the a hair hat wig. She, 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 she did it. I did not see that, that coming. That was a cute hair hat wig. It was a cute hair hat wig for that moment. Like she absolutely. whipped her hair hat around, and Christiane was like, "Oh, absolutely not go out, do me, honey. I could whip my hair around too." And she yeah. took her hair out and she whipped it around, and I, I was like, oh. "Double sachet, they stay. Like keep them both." <laughs> that means they go home. <laughs> You Sashay. know what you meant, a double you, Shantae. Shantae, you stay, whatever. I said you stay. You heard me say stay, right? Well, you're, I, I did. You However, heard me, that's all, then that's all you need to talk. Okay, but you the first thing you said was Sashay. Zip. Zip. Anyway, this lip sync was great. David, what do you think? So I do, I did really like this lip sync. Um, 
especially the first two thirds of it. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I was like, I don't know who's winning for a while. I was like, Arhanas, I think might be, be winning uh -huh. this. Like she started uh -huh. off so strong. Like especially the first like 30 to 40 seconds, Arhanas is killing it. Now for me, I would say the last third, well, uh, there are times when I see lip syncs that a lot of people are like, wow, that's so impressive. And I'm like, oh, okay, now it feels desperate because they're throwing everything at it and it's a bit manic. It feels like it wasn't thought out. So I did kind of get that vibe a little bit near the end that they both were just kind of going for whatever, like tossing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't have to because you're doing so well. So I'd like to see more controlled mm -hmm. and doing well. But overall, it was. Well, still if you a were in a competition for five hundred fifty thousand pesos and you were about to go home, you did. Maybe I'm doing everything I know how to do, and even some things I don't know how to do. Well, <laughs> that's just me. It's but, like, but don't make it look messy. That's the thing. I I, I understand. Exactly it got a little what messy. Saying. I didn't think it got as messy. I think there were moments of you know trying some things and maybe they didn't work in the moment. Yeah. I, I think don't, that's maybe more like Gala was, was doing like. splits and like bouncing around and I'm like, don't do oh, that. I loved and it. then, oh, I loved and it. then when our started doing the hair thing, that felt really desperate to me too. So, but I overall mean, it was good. I don't want to be too negative about it. So I, mean, I, well, I honestly already, thought so they were both. No, I'm, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I think, I think, um, I, I feel I understand what you're saying about the desperation. And I feel like in those moments, I don't mind the desperation because they are desperate. They are trying to stay. Yeah. They are throwing everything at the wall to make sure that their eye is on. That's the same thing we were talking about last time on France when we were talking about um, Ginger walking across the stage and try and how it was just like, yes, that's a tactic. That's a ploy to make sure your eye is on me and not on the other person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be as far away from them so you can look at me over here and then you follow me and look at me over there. This is what our Hennis was doing and this is what Gala was doing. They were like doing anything and everything to make sure the judges was looking at them and it was like, oh, you go take your hair out and you go take this hair and you go whip it around. I'm going to take mine down and I'm going to whip it around. You go do a split, I'm going to do a flip. You go run this way, I'm going to run that way. It I'm was, gonna I'm gonna tilt up my entire body and be only on okay. my shoulder and lip sync and then, from the bottom like Milan. And then like, I'm gonna do a death drop and be like, bam, I'm gonna lip sync down there. Everything that they were doing was desperate. This a whole lip sync for your life is desperation. And yeah. I understand why you're like, but I want it to be more polished. This isn't a performance show. This ain't them a day show saying. Give me my tips because I got a whole routine. Bam, 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 bam. This is them fighting for their life. I and think you all, you all might. That is the best interpretation of a drag number that I've ever seen. <laughs> I think the best way I can explain it, like you all probably still will not agree with me, but the best way that I can explain it for you to see my perspective is that when I see somebody go out there, give controlled lip sync, that shows me they're confident in what they have planned. If they start throwing things at the wall, I feel insecurity. I feel a lack of confidence. Okay. I feel like in their brain, they're saying, oh, I'm losing. What else can I do? That's I, agree. I agree. I didn't that's disagree with you. That's where they lose me. I didn't disagree with you. I agree with you. I yeah. do see that's what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying about the desperation, but yeah. I my point it was like, yes, they are desperate. That's the yeah. thing. I don't disagree with you. It was a, it was don't chaotic. Let me know. Don't let me know you're desperate. Let me know I, you're calm. Okay. You know you got it. That's okay. I, mean. I get that. I still enjoyed this a lot, even with all of that being factored in. I but. feel like and I and I think I think I I, I do I, and I enjoyed it because I felt I like passion and mm -hmm. I, I, I respect the desperation because mm -hmm. it is a desperation. I don't need the control all the time because they gave me that at the beginning. They were very much in control at the beginning. Like you said, the first That's half of it, <laughs> but at the very beginning, they were in control. They were like, okay, let me give it. Let me do it. Then it got towards the end of the song. And they were like, okay, I only got like 30 seconds left of the song. So let me give you the rest <laughs> of what I got because we only, we only got a minute and a half of a song to perform. So, I enjoy the the, com the calmness and the precision, and then the 
passion and desperation. I agree. Great. Agree. Finally, we all disagree. I love it. <laughs> uh, we lose our Hennis here and it is incredibly emotional. Sad. Everybody's sad. Everybody. Everyone is crying and Lolita is crying and Valentina can't cry because I'm pretty sure she's had too Botox. much stuff done. She's had too much Botox in her face. She's like, but, but she I'm was emotional. Sad. I'm very sad. The thing that was taking me out was every time they cut to Matraca because she had that mouthpiece in. Yeah. So she's just. Uh -huh. like... It was so. It was so. It was so... She had that permanent. <laughs> Just like, oh, she just looks sad all the way. Just sad. <laughs> it's so great. I, I, I mean, I, I do get it. There, what? This was six, seven, seven. Mm -hmm. So they've been together all this time. They've grown, and our Hennis and Gala were in that group together, and they like we yeah. are this mm -hmm. crew, and we hate we have to go against each other. I hate I have to send some one. We have to send each other home, yeah. and Gala was. Ate up, and I was like, in this moment, I was like, wow, okay, this is an emotional, vulnerable side to Gala that we don't always see because we yeah. see the jokey, shady, you know, she, she, like trying to pin her as a villain when she's not. Right. She's not really that villain, but they're yeah. making her to be the villain. And I see that. I do see that. Y'all in the comments keep coming at me. I see what they're doing. I understand the edit of it all. Do I like Petty? Not all the time. I don't. But I felt in this to, in this episode, I felt more like empathy for Gala. I was like, I yeah. see Gala as who she just is and her compassion for people she care about. I feel like the people who she's not really close with, like at the beginning, she, sure, she can be Petty. She can be shady and don't really care. And it's like, you're going home and you're going home and you're going home and we're going to make sure you go home. And you, and, and, and was like standing 10 toes down on that. Going home? You're going home. But then <laughs> when it comes to- Are you going home she, though? The people she like, the people she care about, she shows her vulnerability that she cares and she's, and I, and I appreciate that. And, and, and that's how we all are. We all have sides and we get of to course. see a different side of Gala. And I, yeah. I don't hate Gala, people. Please don't make it look like I hate Gala. I don't. I actually like Gala. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, next week, soap opera villains. I'm so excited. Ooh. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> this is like, I've been waiting for a challenge like this. If somebody Another has a dramatic that. thing where they like, curl into the curtains and just keep so that is not what I'm talking that about. is not a telenovela oh it's not no that is an indian soap opera oh. um it's... do you know what do you know what he's talking about though lana absolutely not oh it's so there. there's it's this like real famous like meme at this point but there's a dramatic moment in an indian soap opera where i think it's like a, a mother slapping her daughter or some something of mm -hmm. that sort and the, the actress playing the daughter is just so dramatic to the point. Like, she gets slapped and she just goes, ah! And then just, like, twirls around, travels, like, 15 feet to, like, this curtain, I think. And then just, like, puts her head in the curtain and, left. like, is pretending to die. And I'm just like, what? Over slap. We'll have to show you a clip after this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Please, we'll, we'll send it to you. But um, we do have a dark day. Yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> it's actually really interesting. Interesting, I'm sure. It's very interesting because uh, in third place still is me. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have zero points. Just see, you're not in the negatives, but that's where you want to be. And I don't Mago like that you did not, not gain any points for me in this episode, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So mm -hmm. in second place still is David. And David, mm -hmm. you still have 32 points. That's kind of cool. You also did not... You had a net zero this right. episode because you had uh, one of the tops and both of the bottoms and you lost a person. So yeah. um, in first place, uh, Lana actually did gain points, shockingly. In a shocking turn of events, Lana gained points. Um, <laughs> and Lana's up to 45 points. We love that. Do we? We do, we do because my person's winning this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank we you so much for joining us. My person won. I mean, mine's who, not. Mine's will, not, and I they, love her. I love her dearly, but she's I love her mine. down. But they're trying to come for her all the they time. They are. So. They are just no. Anyway, 
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching our coverage of Drag Race Mexico, episode six. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, different video to talk about episode seven of Drag Race Mexico. In the meantime, make sure to hit all of the buttons on your preferred audio or visual platform. We only have one visual platform, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> to say that you support us. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the Cup Pod for all of the most up-to-date Cup news uh, and all of our funny moments because we are funny bitches. Make sure you get your lur- uh, your merch. I almost said lurch. <laughs> I'm tired. Make sure to get your merch in the link below, which includes Cup mugs as well as several other Cup-related uh, memorabilia. I don't know why I said memorabilia, but okay. Follow all of us on Twitter too, because we're cool and lovely. And if you're a fan of Big Brother, we will all be tweeting about Big Brother very, 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 very incredibly soon. So mm-hmm. um, that is that on all of that. Uh, ch- uh, cheers. Cheers, yeah. cheers. Cheers with my microphone is fine. Cheers. <laughs> Bye now. Adios. 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 Hasta luego. Hasta la vista.